All right, guys, uh, this is something that I'm really excited about. This is a, uh, isn't that cool? Let's see if I can get, there it is, there's the focus. Go off my face, there we go. So this is a staff, right? This is a walking stick. The same design could be carved into a cane. It could be carved into um, a larger or smaller version of this. But either way, this is a, uh, uh, a version of the, the, the kick of the stick that I have not done before. In fact, the last video I did like this just went very, very poorly. So I'm excited to offer you this uh, as a, just a big improvement to that. This is carved in willow and it's about one and a half inches in diameter at the widest part. The bottom is uh, a little bit narrower, but yeah, just such a fun project. Two tools, guys, that's it. All there is uh, is a uh, knife and a uh, number 11. This is a six millimeter number 11. So just a skewed detail knife and a number 11. And this video is sponsored by Wood Carving Illustrated. Uh, if you use the code CARVER, capital C-A-R-V-E-R, -E all caps, it will give you some free handouts. Follow the links below for more information. And uh, that bottom link beneath the first link is the free uh, information that they provide. If you use that code, it gives you some instructional material from myself and Catherine Overcash. But regardless, check that out in the link below. Uh, it's such a great magazine. And uh, let's get into this project. Let's do it. All right, now the cane that I'm using is just about, uh, I'll say an inch and a half in diameter. And I'm going to use the top of the branch. It's about, uh, you know, about the standard height of a cane, not too much uh, taller than my uh, head, maybe just above my shoulders. And to start this, I'm going to use a knife. Now I'm using a skewed detail knife. This is from FlexCut. And I like to use these knives because they allow me to do some of the same things that skews can do. And that allows me to do some pushing. But I'm going to start by clearing off the material at the top of this piece of wood. Now, there was a break at the top of this and I kind of want to leave the natural break because I think it's going to add to kind of some of the details of the hair. Uh, this is a piece of willow, by the way. This broke down in my front yard or broke off of a, a tree in the, in the yard. And willow is known to be pretty decent for carving. In fact, diamond willow is one of the most popularly carved and probably most highly sought after materials for carving in uh, canes. And uh, so yeah, just trying to stay out of the way of big knots is gonna be a huge help here as I'm working through this project. So using the knife, and I'm noticing a knot there, so I'm gonna try and avoid that area. I'm just clearing the, the wood away from this kind of general area where I'm gonna to start to carve the face in. It's gonna be a nice help. Now I wanted to use this uh, kind of high point because you notice how this particular piece of wood curves a little bit. You don't have to have a curve. You can do the same thing that I'm doing here, carved into the straight piece of a straight shaft of a cane. Now, what I'm gonna do to start is I'm gonna define the, the, the proportions of the head. And uh, to do that, I'm just gonna assume that my head is gonna be uh, just, I don't know, say an inch and a half uh, wide. Well, it does have to be about an inch and a half wide because of the piece of wood. And maybe, uh, I don't know, three inches tall or so, maybe a little bit um, shorter than that. So to start, I'm gonna create a notch for the eyes and I'm using a stop cut here. This is a uh, angled stop cut. So notice how I'm coming in just like so. And then I'm coming up top with the stop cut. I'm sorry, what I was doing before was actually technically a relief cut. This is the stop cut, All right? So I'm coming in with that edge. Let me darken this up so you can see it a little bit more clearly. Okay, there's that. Just coming in and making this nice strong edge, just like so. So what I'm doing here is I'm kind of defining where the uh, brow ridge is gonna be. And luckily this, this tree, again, is willow, is nice, fairly soft wood, fairly usable, uh, not too bad to carve in. The last uh, version of a video I did like this was uh, in, I think it was Hickory, and it was by far the hardest hand carving I've ever done. <laughs> In my entire life and it figures that it was uh, you know for you guys to watch and uh, it was a struggle bus no doubt but yeah so anyway I'm coming alongside and I'm creating these two especially emphasizing these two cuts alongside of one another right so really coming at about a 45 degree angle uh, at the uh, center point just like so see that all right, so I'm gonna grab my marker so we can get an idea of where the center line is. I'm gonna grab that. And I'm just gonna mark that out here, just like so. 
And yeah, this wood is a little bit green, you can tell, because it's not responding super well to my marker. But that's okay, we can still see the general idea. All right, so now I'm gonna come, oh, let's say, let's get my ruler out. About, uh, I'm gonna say an inch, a little less than that, maybe three quarters of an inch below that first notch that we carved. Let's say three quarters of an inch below. I'm gonna indicate that with a little cut. And I'm gonna use uh, the knife with the same kind of stop cut. This time coming in a lot like I did with the, the bridge of the brow ridge. Uh, just about straight, maybe slight tilt upward. And then a cut to that point, okay? Now we can also make this a V cut. In fact, I, sometimes I'll change it to a V cut right after the fact. Going on either side of that center line to make that slightly V'd out just like that. And you can see why we do that. We're starting to get that shape of the nose. Okay, now I'm coming in with that knife and I am cutting to that nose area, just like so. We're really getting a little bit more depth, not a ton here. We don't want this to stick out too far. That mustache underneath is really gonna project as well. So we wanna make sure we're coming in, oh, about uh, an eighth of an inch moving towards uh, a quarter. We wanna get something close to a quarter. We're gonna make him a big old schnoz. Nice old schnoz, see that? That depth that we got in there. Okay, cool. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is you can see I'm gonna do a scooping cut. So I'm gonna come on either side of the nose with my knife and I'm going to use the, the skew knife here. Notice how the glimmer of light is bouncing off of the metal because I'm turning the blade as I'm going through the sides of the nose. All right, so scooping out material there, like so. All right, now wear a glove. I should have said this, uh, I, I can't say it enough, honestly. Wear a glove when you're carving uh, because, you know, especially if you're holding the piece of wood that you're carving in, the likelihood that you're gonna cut yourself just skyrockets, okay? So do that. Okay, next, I'm coming alongside the, uh, the nose a little bit, narrow, narrowing it, actually, coming on either side of that center line. That's why that center line is so helpful, because it allows me to see where the wood is, where the wood is uh, on either side of the face. It keeps things in symmetry. So I'm just narrowing down that nose a little bit, just like so, all right? Okay, now I'm going to take the forehead down just a little bit. And what I'm doing here is I'm allowing for the hair on top of the head. So I'm gonna make a flat cut. I'm just coming up top the, the head and then I'm making a stop cut, oh, say about three quarters of an inch from that brow ridge. So another stop cut, stop and relief cut. So stop and relief cut with that knife, stop and relief. And again, what we're doing here is we're getting that hairline so I'm actually gonna to start to angle upward as I get to this outer corner because we've got male pattern baldness, right? We've got that receding hairline, <laughs> sadly, that m most men will get to experience at some point, including myself. And I'm already starting to see that hairline slowly scoot back. It's kind of sad to see, but that's okay. It's just age. <laughs> I keep telling myself that. All right, so we go back and uh, get that angle, right? And we come in here. Just like so. And you see how this crack, the way that the wood is broken from this storm, I think it's gonna add some character to the hair up here. I think it might fold into the design. All right, so I'm just going through with that knife and bringing the material down on that forehead. Beautiful. Now I'm gonna define the mustache and I'm gonna do that by coming alongside the, the face, alongside the nose with a slightly downward curved cut and then another cut, really a V cut, a V shaped cut coming in just like so along the side of the face. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure I've got lots of depth here and here and I'm gonna come in 
and relieve that cut coming in with an angle. And look at that, see how we've defined the, what will be the mustache? And the same thing over here. Look at that, isn't that cool? And the same thing here, we're gonna curve that cut that comes down along the cheek and makes up what is the beard. I feel like I'm on Jeopardy when I say, what is the beard? Okay, see that? <clears throat> Coming along nicely, all right. I wanna narrow the forehead a little bit. I don't want the forehead to be too wide and I don't want it to just keep going out into the Netherlands. Nothing against the Netherlands. I know a lot of you watching are from the Netherlands. Okay, cool. Now a lot of folks would just kind of stop here and paint those eyes in, and that's actually a really great way of starting out if you're a beginner, carving the face, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna actually carve them in. Okay, so this next cut is gonna be on the inside corner of the eyes, and it's gonna be an angled, uh, it's really what's called a pyramid cut, okay? Or a triangle cut. So we come in, just like so. See the angle along the bridge of the nose? I'm gonna make a cut along this original cut that we made, and then another one here, popping this out, coming from underneath. So really, we're just creating a triangle, like, uh, I guess, sort of like an isosceles triangle. Pretty close to it at least. Okay, and there should be a chunk that comes out. And I'll go back over those cuts once again, and I'm gonna angle in. There we go, and see that chunk comes out? Just like so. I'm gonna go back over it a third time, get nice and deep. And I'm not gonna make too much of a fuss about uh, getting it perfect, but I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Same cut, boom. That top angle. And just like so, coming in. That should come right out. If it doesn't come out, just go back over it once again. All right. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Deepen that inside of the V a little. Okay, now this gives us a great setup for what soon will be the eyes. Now, I'm going to uh, create another cut on the sides of the nose. This is gonna be where the nostrils end, okay? And we're gonna be coming alongside the nose, just like so. And with a relief cut. Another triangle cut, guys. Lots of triangle cuts in, in, in this face, at least, um, at least what, six? Okay. At a minimum four. Okay, so then we're gonna go on the other side. And the same thing, stop cut. Excuse my break there, I just wanted to check something. And uh, relief cut. And what we're doing here, establishing nostrils. See that? How fun is that? You know, not more than 10 minutes, in, not much more than 10 minutes in, and we are just in a really good spot here. So, uh, happy, happy with that. And uh, excuse the camera angle, I'm, I'm you know, holding this uh, piece of wood. This, this is underneath uh, my leg as we're carving, so it's a little awkward, but it's working out very nicely. Okay, so now we're gonna come underneath the eye, and to do that, we're gonna create a cut that just comes beneath the uh, or extends that cut that we made and just comes on down with a V channel. So I'm coming like so, and then beneath that, just like this, okay? And we're creating a ledge. Just that simple, and we'll do the same thing over here. So I'll really slow it down so you can see. So I'm coming off that edge that we already created, going in at an angle. So I'm going uh, upward angle, the blade is turned upward and in, and then going down to that angle, the opposite direction, to get that little chunk out. And I'll rock back and forth over that until I get a nice channel. Back and forth over those two cuts. They run 
opposite directions of one another, and that's what gives us that very nice little groove, okay? Beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna cut that back in, get a little bit deeper under there. Just like so. And the same thing under here. Now I'm gonna use the same scoop and cut that we used earlier in between the bridge of the nose and the cheeks. Notice the tool turning in my hand as I'm going through. Just like so. You can practice that on a scrap wood because it is kind of a challenging thing to get under your belt if you're new to carving. That scooping cut, it's not as easy as it looks, but it's actually, once you figure it out, super helpful and, and useful when you're uh, trying to just use as few tools as possible as we are here with this, with this carving. Okay, so just like so, I've come on either side of the nose. And we've got a really nice looking wood spirit shaping up here. Now I'm going to make the same V cut that we made here earlier to underscore the eye, but just uh, on the other side of the eye. Okay, so I'm coming along the other side, just like so, and we're creating uh, ultimately a bag under the eye. Same thing here. It's kind of like a V cut, boom, or a, a V shape, boom, boom. Get that chunk out and just go back over it, just like so. Just like so, we're moving that wood underneath, relief, underneath that mound, and come under with that relief cut, just like so. And I'm going to come underneath that eye, what will soon be the eye at least, and bring that material back underneath it, just like so. Okay, and we've got that nice mound for the eye. Okay. Oh, this is so much fun. I love carving uh, in a nice soft willow. It's a beautiful wood to carve if you can get your hands on it. But this would work super well in basswood. Uh, if you had a basswood twig, you could get, um, you can order, uh, you know, willow sticks online. I believe there are some uh, wood carving distributors, at least there used to be, that sell them. I'm going to try to find some and link them but below if I can. But um, if not, just experimenting. Try carving various woods like aspens or birches. If you have fallen limbs from uh, a softer woods, um, do just collect from your yard. Again, this just fell in my yard. You don't have to have the same piece of wood that I'm using, same species. Um, just experiment with different ones and you'll find that some are a lot better than others to carve. Some are horrible to carve. I mean, like I said, the last one I carved was in hickory and that was just a piece that I had found somewhere in. Oh, horrible, horrible wood to carve. I mean, just an awful experience. What I'm doing right now, by the way, is I'm getting in this inside corner, really on the inside of that triangle, getting lots of depth in there, because that's going to be the inside corner of my eye. Okay, and then I'm going to come around and go over the original cut that we made, just like so, okay? And what I'm doing here is I'm setting up for the cut, which I'm about to make, which is a, um, a relief cut, and we're actually going to uh, get the eyes in. So I'm going to carve the bottom lid by just going straight in, with the knife across the bottom, uh, kind of bisecting from this line to this bottom line here, right? From being between these two lines, I'm coming along and I'm just making the bottom lid so it's slightly curved upward, right? I'm just going across like so. Now I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to carve down towards that line. And I'm defining the bottom lid, okay? Notice how we're starting to get that eye shape coming in. Same thing here. Carve down from that line that we established. And uh, if it doesn't come free, just go back over that bottom cut. And you can start to see the shape of the eye coming in. How fun is that? Ho, ho, ho. All right. I'm going to create some grooves in the forehead, give them some character. And he's almost free. There he is. Okay, great. 
kind of take that forehead down a little bit. Using a scoop and cut. And coming alongside the temples as well, just like so. Excuse me as the camera moves, bumping it with my stick. Okay, that's a little better. You can see what we're doing here. I'm gonna come underneath the eye here with my knife, make a stop and relief cut underneath there. Clean up this side a little bit, stop. Actually, sometimes I do my stop and relief cuts in reverse. So I'll start with the relief cut and then do the stop cut. That's my little secret though. Don't tell anyone, that's not the right way of doing it. So I'm just going along here like so. I'm gonna deepen this cut to the lower lid and, and get this side a little bit lower because it looks like we're a little high on one side. Take that lower lid down. There it is, came free, just like that. All right. And look at the character we're already getting, you know, again, 20 minutes or so in, not a lot of time. And I'm, you know, I'm pretty fast at this, and so I don't want you guys to rush. Please take your time. Do not be hard on yourself if you're not as far along as I am. I've been doing this for, you know, nearly 20 years, and you should not feel bad if you're not carving as quickly. In fact, I wouldn't even be carving this quickly if the camera weren't on and if I wasn't feeling the pressure uh, to get this project done for you guys before, you know, I bore you to death. So... Uh, don't rush yourself. I mean, gosh, I don't carve as quick as I do in these videos normally. You know, I'm I'm sometimes just taking my good old time and enjoying the process because, you know what? Life's too short. Life is too short to try and rush through and cut yourself and get yourself in all kinds of trouble just because you, uh, just because you're in a rush. Yeah. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy the process of it, you know. Okay, so now I'm just coming in again, re going back over that inside corner of that triangle just to clean it out and get nice deep cuts in that inside corner. You can see I'm doing repeating the triangle cut that we made earlier, all those minutes ago, <laughs> just like so. All right, until that comes free. Beautiful, just like that. And the same thing here. Looks like we're already kind of free in that side, which is good. I'm kind of narrowing just uh, above the ball of the nose, right? So the ball of the nose is right at the tip. So I'm coming in with the scoop cut right after that ball just to get that shape defined of the, of the nose. And I'll also narrow just above where the uh, nose starts to transition into the brow ridge or the forehead, just like so. Got some really cool grain spalting in here, which is making, giving this all, all kinds of character. You know, a lot of people don't like character in wood, but I, I love it. I look for it, and I look for pieces of wood that have that character, and I try and incorporate it into the design. I'm definitely not one of these people who needs to have a perfect piece of wood. You know, it's just, to me, it's like, why would you try to hide the beauty of the, of the natural spalting? And that's what this is called. This discoloration is called spalting. And, you know, in, in different worlds, in wood turning, for instance, this is a really desirable thing. It's just in carving, a lot of people, they get distracted by the little imperfections, whereas, I don't know, I like them. I'm weird, though, so you guys might not think the same thing about it. So I'm just going on the sides of the forehead, narrowing things up a little bit. Just getting those shapes set in. Taking those cheeks down. Okay. Well, that's super fun. I'm going to take the uh, lower lid, just take a little bit, of two, two hairs and some areas, as Bob Ross would say, just a little bit of material 
off the bottom lids, both sides, just taking a little bit out from the lids. Okay, very nice. Cool, all right, now that's that. Got a nice deep set brow ridge. A kind of a flat tip on the nose, so I'm gonna round that nose. So you got a small nose, not a ton of projection on him, so I'm gonna take the, the knife and do a little bit more of that scooping on the side here to get that nose to come out a little bit more. Okay, and the same thing on this side, ready? See that scooping? And then we'll go back in with that stop cut that we did earlier along the side of the nose and that triangle cut. See that? How about that? We'll do it to the other side as well. So here's the triangle cut. So we're going straight in alongside the nostril. Angle cut here. And then coming underneath the, get that chunk right out. Bada bing, bada boom. How about that? How about that? All right. Okay, I'm gonna come in and narrow the tip of the nose, get a little bit more point. Now when we look from this side, we got a little bit more schnoz there, which is what we want. And gosh, I mean, you could just add all kinds of detail to these. You can get carried away adding all kinds of shape and dimension and wrinkles and, uh, you know, I mean, there's just a whole world of, of information uh, that you can add to this face to make him older and give him more character or make him softer or more pretty. I mean, just, you know, just endless possibilities. And that's what's so fun about carving is you can just make this person, this little character your own as you're progressing through the project. And I do have uh, an online school that is designed to help you to kind of learn the, the structure of the face and learn the anatomy and learn how to execute the, the structures, the more realistic structures. And, uh, that uh, is in the link below, that resource. But, um, you know, otherwise, the goal is just for you to experiment, you know, and to get better at this stuff on your own. And uh, to, to learn through trial and error and to use images. I love using pictures. I'm a huge fan of using pictures uh, to help me in my carvings. And uh, I just think people don't use pictures enough. But then using your imagination you know, putting the pictures away and just saying, okay, what can I make from my head? And that's what we're doing here is we're just experimenting and, and be, trying to be creative as much as we can. So, all right. So there's that starting to kind of shape the forehead a little bit. It comes in, it angles in as uh, right before it gets to the hair because the hairline, again, it's kind of receding a little. So you can see I'm kind of angling that back into that hairline, just like so. Beautiful. Okay. Bringing that hair down. Oh, you know when I'm getting quiet, I'm having fun. I'm having fun, and I'm just getting lost in the carving. It's so easy to do that. Um, but this is a tutorial, so I should probably tell you what I'm doing. Um, so at this point, um, I am uh, starting to just kind of move the around the hair and take that hairline back a little bit, just to make him look a little bit, a little bit more old. Okay, now would be a great time to start thinking about some hair. And to do that, I'm going to use a gouge. Now I have a gouge and uh, this is a number 11. I believe it's a six millimeter. This is a flex cut tool. And I'm gonna use it to create the grooves that lead up to the mustache and that create some of the shape around the hair. And so going around the mustache like so. And uh, well, I bump the cheeks. So I'll do it to the other side, right? That's the rule. If we do something to one side, even if it's an accident, if we can make it look less like an accident by applying it to the other side. 
that's golden. Okay, and then I'll do the same thing up here. Start to create some uh, some grooves for hair coming down from up high, going down into the root of the hair like so. Okay, we're just creating some waves. And by that I just mean like coming in at an angle, not or or um, making a cut that's sort of S shaped, making waves instead of just straight cuts for the hair. It's gonna make the hair way more interesting. So I'm just coming in like that. Just like so. Some grooves in for the hair, just like that. Some flow. I'm going to create a little spot for the mouth here by just coming just below the mustache. Coming down, and we could also use a V-tool for this, or we could even use the knife. But I just happen to have the gouge, so I'm going to use that. Just like so. I'm going to get that hair flowing. Some grooves for the hair. Grab my knife here. All right, I'm going to use the knife to come in. Get some residue on it. And just deepen some of the cuts. Maybe come in and get those nostril flares by just coming in the edge. Little scoop cut, just a little indication of nostrils. Like so. Okay. And you know, again, you could get really carried away with the shapes here using the knife for a stop and relief cut. Now, if I'm you and I'm uh, doing this and I'm holding it in my hand while I'm carving, I'm probably going to find a smaller gouge than the one that I had in terms of the length of the handle. It just makes life a lot easier. This one's really long and so it's going to be a little bit harder to control. Um, but it's just what I have nearby. And I, I'm choking up on the handle so that I can really control the, the, the use of it. But yeah, and then I'd love to just come in and create some really fun character all the way around this piece just lots of lines coming off of the of the face just to give it some real character into the bark now you might lose the bark depends on when the tree was collected if it was collected in the winter which it was uh, it's a lot more likely to hold on to the bark if it was collected in the spring or summer it's going to be less likely to hold on to the bark because that layer where the nutrients and water travels through is going to be a lot more, um, it's going to be more disconnected than it would be in the winter time. It's going to be holding on to its bark a lot more tightly in the winter because it's cold. <laughs> That's not why, but anyway, the point is uh, this is probably more likely to keep its bark because of uh, the fact that I collected it in the winter. But if you know yours isn't, then one thing you can do is actually just you know take the uh, bark and just carve it off of your cane and you can carve it back on if you really want it on there but if I were you I'd just create a fun texture or come up with some design that you can carry all the way down your your cane 
and uh, or your or your walking stick, whatever you're doing here. In this case, I'm carving a walking stick, less of a cane, but this could very well be done into your cane at home. Okay, and now I'm going to break up the edge of this mustache, and that's pretty much it before we call it. Uh, this has been such a fun little uh, project, and uh, check out, as I mentioned, the, uh, before I get to that, hold on, I'm using the knife to create uh, upside down kind of like V cuts, and that's separating out the mustache, just like so. And it's making it look a little bit less kind of boring and straight. Animating it a little bit. Okay. Just like so. And I'll create a little hole just where the where the mouth is hiding underneath there, a little triangle cut. Get that little piece out, just like so. Okay. Just like that. All right, guys, I mean, there's just lots you could do with this. You could sand it. I mean, we could, we didn't even carve eyebrows. We could uh, go in there and get really crazy with a knife and just create some texture for the eyebrows. Um, but, you know, as far as I'm concerned, um, take this as far as you want, you know, simplify it as much as you want. You don't have to do it exactly the way that I do it. It's a great exercise if you're already used to carving realistic faces to kind of just getting a sense of your memory of the face, of the human face, and just having fun with uh, adding a little character to the wood that you've got. And uh, I'm really happy with this. You know, as far as, you know, quick carvings that uh, really yield a great result. People love to see wood spirits and canes. It's just such a fun thing. It's easy to sell this, too, if you're into selling your carvings, if that's something that you're interested in. And... Uh, it's just, oh, it's so much fun. It's so much fun. I mean, I really, I genuinely enjoy this project and I appreciate you guys joining me. And uh, gosh, I better say goodbye or else I'll be here all day just whittling on this thing. Now, as far as nose, I should say before we go, or sorry, eyes rather, uh, you could go in and carve the eyes uh, a number of different ways. I'm kind of leaving that up to you. As, uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, you could just leave these blank and then paint them in or... Uh, goodness, there's so much you could do. So much you can do. So um, have fun with this. You know, play around, enjoy yourself. Carve the eyes in if you want to carve them in with a gouge. You know, you can use your little knife. For instance, I can carve a little triangle cut in here and hollow it out. That's one way. I'll just show you that. And uh, otherwise, we won't get into painting it. But so you want them to look off to the side. Triangle cut. Boom. 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 And then just flake that piece out. And that gives us our... Man, looking off to the side. So just, again, so much fun. You can get totally carried away with detailing the beard. And I think you should. I think you should have fun with the beard. So enjoy the guy, a piece, guys. Enjoy this project. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Once again, check out Wood Carving Illustrated uh, if you want to uh, get really great resources for carving. And uh, lots of great beginner projects, lots of great tips for your uh, carving journey. And uh, use the code CARVER again. That's going to give you access to some free instructional stuff from me, um, some more in-depth uh, carving uh, instruction from myself, and uh, a project from oh, Catherine Overcash as well, like a written step-by-step -step article. So anyway, check that out, and uh, check out the online school if you want to learn you know, a lot more in-depth information about carving faces than this project, like how I break this stuff down, how I understand all the major shapes, and uh, how I would really hone this and get this really nice and tight. Okay, guys, be well. <laughs> I'm trying to get up close so you can see. He says bye, too. All right, bye.